back with another episode of Wrestling with Exotics. It's your boy, the franchise kid, franchise Jerry, the face that runs the place, the chant that runs the motherfucking camp. Yeah, I heard me. And uh, today, we're going to be talking about some wrestling, man. Y'all know what the fuck going on. Y'all know how we do it. Y'all know how we play it. You know, uh, this past weekend, a lot of great fucking wrestling, man. A lot of great fucking wrestling. Even last weekend, a lot of great fucking wrestling. Now, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I miss Forbidden Door, and I'm sick as fuck. My schedule is just fucking crazy. I was having car problems, all type of shit. I know, uh, excuses, excuses. I did not get to watch AEW Forbidden Door, and I'm pissed because I heard it was fire. Uh, a lot of the matches looked dope. My boy Swerve Strickland retained against Will Ospreay. Um, Mercedes Monet walked out there, uh, a double belt champion. And Tony Storm ended up retaining her title. Like. I can't ask for a better outcome for a pay-per-view, you know what I mean? Three of my favorite people is up right now, so hey, shout out to AEW and everything that they're doing. Uh, I wish I could just be more in tune. Uh, unfortunately, I feel like I'm more in tune in WWE just because they like literally post from three different fucking channels a, a day and all type of shit. Like, so there's just so much WWE content going around. They got, they got NXT, they got fucking Underground, all type of shit. Nigga, NXT UK, all type of shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? They got so many outlets of this shit. So it's like, fuck, I'm just seeing more WWE shit by, <laughs> by default. It's, it's nothing, like, personal. Like, for real. I, I love AEW personally. Like, honestly, like, I would love to even have a job in AEW one day. So y'all not going to hear me talking crazy about them unless we talking about Rampage. Rampage is a shit show. Y'all got to stop. But as y'all can see, we're in a new environment today. This is my bedroom where all the magic happens. As y'all can see, I'm a babe king. Got it on my bed. That's how real it is. I got my Rey Mysterio mask in case any, you know what I'm saying, us want to come over and role play, you know what I'm saying, how we do it. And then, you know, of course, I got the WWE winged championship belt. That's my shit. But, you know, I keep my favorite on me at all costs, at all points of time. This is my shirt right here, the John Cena spinner belt. And speaking of John Cena, we're going to talk about him a little later. Unfortunately, it's GG's. But, man, I want to talk about the best pay-per-view of the motherfucking weekend of the past two weeks of pretty much a cool-ass minute. All right, Shawn Michaels been in his motherfucking bag. Do y'all hear me? Hold on, before I go any further, I haven't even got to roll up yet, y'all. That's how excited I was to do this show. I'm about to roll up on camera for the first time in a long time, but fuck it, here we go. As y'all know, I like to roll me up some spliffs. Get you a cool paper and dry you out some leaf. You don't need a lot. A lot of tobacco is crazy. This is all you need. If a nigga tell you you need more than that, he's obviously going through shit. <laughs> all right, so anyway... Let's talk about NXT Heat Wave. The first match I want to talk about is Lola Vice versus Roxanne Perez. Now, two quarters of the match, two quarters of the match, I could say Lola Vice was definitely winning. But at one point, she ended up doing a spinning back fist, missing Roxanne Perez, and slamming her hand against the motherfucking uh, the ring post. So that pretty much fucked up her entire momentum. Roxanne like put her, put on a bunch of moves on her after that, and then out of nowhere was hitting her with the pop rocks, which is like the sunset flip. When she does it way better than Kofi Kingston, trust and believe. She hit Lola Vice with like four of them, bruh, and I'm sick as fuck. Like honestly, I love Roxanne Perez. Uh, she's the shit in my opinion. Like she's definitely the prodigy, and she deserved to win and all that. I can't say nothing but good things about her. I just hate that that shit happened to Lola Vice. <laughs> Cause look, I'm not going, y'all know I'm not going to lie, man. I love me some Latina girls, man. I can't help it. But at the same time, I really love Lola Vice. Like I got genuine love for her. Like she could do no wrong in my eyes. And yo, like I had so much faith that she was finna win this fucking match. I was sick as fuck. Honestly, uh, I, I, it's, it was set up perfect for her to win. She had a mom there, all type of shit. Like, it just made sense. But I always say this, when you can always tell when someone's going to win a championship 
or retain a championship by the way they come out in their entrance. And like Lola, she came out in her basic entrance where she do her little Latina shit, shake her ass, say hi to the crowd, blah, blah, woo woo And then Roxanne Perez come out and her gimmick is a little bit more flashy. She in all white, kind of like she's like giving a message like, bitch, I'm the purest thing in wrestling history. That's why I'm coming out here and it's all white and I'm about to shit on you. Like, you think you stopping this? Like, shit, I'm about to give you hell. And he, like I said, like another example is when Cody Rhodes beat Roman Reigns. Roman came out with his basic tribal chief bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Now, shout out to Roman, I fuck with Roman, ain't bullshit, but I'm just talking. And then, you know, Cody came out with the whole helmet and shit, and like, the nigga looked like he was not leaving there without a championship, bro. It just be like that, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you can always tell if somebody's gonna win by their entrance. I can't really say the same thing for Trick Williams, though. Trick Williams, we'll go ahead and talk about that match right now. I'm sick. Trick Williams had to defend his belt. Speaking of belts, let me set this down so I can really roll this shit and talk to y'all. Y'all feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, Trick Williams has to defend his belt in a fatal four-way match against Sean Spears, Javon Evans, and Ethan Page. Now, that's already a fucked up lineup, but it was definitely set to be a good match, no matter who was the winner of this. Who did I really want to win this match? I'm not gonna lie, I wanted Javon to win this match. I wanted Javon, bro, like, he was so fucking close, he was doing the craziest moves, he got the best chain wrestling I've seen in a long time, especially from a black fucking person, like, yo... He's out there doing shit. He moving like a luchador. My nigga's out there talking about he bouncy. He flipping niggas off when he doing these moves. Like right before he do them. Like ha ha. Fucking Phoenix Falcon Arrow Splash and all type of shit. Niggas doing wild shit, bro. Like shout out Javon, bro. Young OG. That nigga's really putting on, bro. But, you know, the winner of this match. I ended up having a random thought in my head. Like as I'm watching this match, like. I wouldn't mind if Ethan Page win this match. Like, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad. It makes sense. It'd be cool and all that. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. So as the match go on, sure enough, the nigga ends up winning. And he wasn't even trying to win. I mean, he was trying to win, but he definitely wasn't expecting to win because the nigga got kneed upside his fucking mouth and fell onto the pin. Uh, Javon Evans got kneed in his mouth first with the trick shot. And then uh, Trick Williams hit Ethan Page with it. But uh, uh, when Trick Williams did it, he ended up knocking that nigga out, and uh, Ethan Page fell on Javon Evans for the one, two, three, and Trick Williams couldn't break it up because Sean, Perfect Tim, my nigga, shout out him, he had a great fucking match too. He ended up pulling Trick Williams out the fucking ring because he thinking Trick Williams about to take the cover, so he don't even know what the fuck going on himself, yo. Like, oh, man, I was sick as fuck. I was sick as fuck for Trick Williams because I know, like, yo, like, you, you've been working your ass off, bro. You've been holding it down since Mania, all type of shit. But it's like, man, like, I'm ready for somebody else. I'm ready for a new face. Javon Evans, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, he in, in, like, in wrestling terms, like, he in good, like, he's putting the business in good hands, for sure. You give him the belt, the, the belt is in good hands. Everything is cool. Like, I got nothing but faith in that, for sure. Javon Evans is that dog. Oh, for y'all that don't know. I'm also putting some wax in here. That's why this should be burning crazy, all type of shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm a hollow. Um, but yeah, yo. Great fucking match. Great fucking match. I can't say that enough. Shawn Michaels definitely in his bag with this pay-per-view. I enjoyed every match, even the tag team match with Chase U and uh, Axiom and Nathan Frazier. Yo, they, they went crazy. Uh, Nathan Frazier and Axiom ended up retaining their belts. Shout out to them. Uh, we won't do the full breakdown, but yeah, they definitely had a great match. <sighs> Oba. Oba versus Wesley. I had to DM Oba personally. I told him, hey, buddy, you're lucky you didn't go to jail for what you did to that man tonight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yo, he whipped this nigga's ass crazy, like, Yo, it was belt to ass season the moment the bell rang. Um, 
of course, you know, Wesley had his had his moments, but it wasn't enough. It was nowhere near enough. This nigga Obafemi did a F20. Y'all niggas know what a F20 is? That's what Brock Lesnar do. But this nigga Obafemi threw Wesley up in the air and the nigga spent around like 20 times <laughs> and then finally came down. Yo, that was an F20, the first ever. And like, yo... What Obafemi do in the ring is so crazy, man. When he make it to the main roster, yo, it's it's going to be a whole different vibe. When he's going up against Gunther, Braun Breaker, uh, Braun Strowman, shit. Like, you know, Bronson Reed, the, 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 the heavyweights of the main rosters. <sighs> this, isn't, this isn't your typical black buff meathead like Titus O'Neil. Or, you know, uh, R.I.P. to dead, no disrespect, shag ass spar. Or, you know, like, usually when niggas is buff, like, if you're not Booker T, like, they're going to do you bad. They're not going to write you as good. Or, you know, you probably don't got, like, the best story. You know what I mean? Like, even, like, sh uh, uh, shag ass spar, like, they made nigga part of crime time. Like, they made him a black stereotype, bro. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, look at fucking... Uh, what's the nigga name? Apollo. Look at Apollo. They made, they get that nigga a fucking random ass, uh, Ethiopian accent for two weeks that he couldn't even keep. So that's what I mean. Like, but in this case for Oba Femi, they can't do this with him because Oba just, he not for the fuck around. Like you, you, he not for the fuck around. You can't fuck this up. You literally can't fuck this up. This man is a fucking monster and his moveset won't allow you to fuck him up. Because it's like, yo, what he's doing to these niggas? They, they, what, the, what, the, what the fuck? How are they? How, how is Wesley gonna stop him? If y'all would have wrote Wesley beating that nigga, like, yo, there would this would have been an outrage. And yeah, uh, Wesley is black, but this is a this is different. This is different. This is different. You can't play with this man. You can't play with him. You can't drop the ball on him because this man can definitely feed generations of wrestling. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, no. Shout out Oba Femi, bro. He's been doing a great fucking job as well. Uh, him and Javon uh, are probably my favorite wrestlers to watch on NXT right now. Because, yo, they just don't fuck around. They get in the ring and they do what they gotta do. They don't play with these niggas and they don't give niggas opportunities to play with them. It's that simple. Alright, the last match I want to mention. Yo, this match... I would say it was probably the best match of the entire night. Uh, Kehlani Jordan and Sol Ruka, ugh, yo, their match could feed a whole generation of families, okay? I, I can promise you that. Uh, this was, again, the best match of the fucking night. Sol Ruka has to be, I'm saying it right now, and no glaze or nothing, she is probably top three favorite women's wrestlers to watch wrestle today is Bianca Belair. Let me say this next one wisely. Bianca Belair, Tony Storm, and So Ruka. Hey, y'all can talk shit if you want. Tony Storm is she's must see TV. Uh, Bianca Belair, that's the goal. So I can't even Come on now, let's not let's not play. And so Ruka, bro, she's getting better and better and better every fucking week. Oh my god, this female finna be a star, and it's finna be crazy. Like I like she just passed Tiffany in my rankings to me. Like Tiffany Stratton is is obviously like one of my favorites for sure, top five. But yo, I gotta put soul over her because she's so fucking athletic and she turns up every match that she is in. Every match that she is in, like you be thinking like, mm, like she cool, but her opponent finna be like kinda lame or whatever. But no, she even makes her opponent good. Like that's not common, like all in, in every wrestling match, like where she's making you good, like, or your opponent is making you good. She's she literally made Kaylani Jordan have a great match and made her look like a champion, and that's that's also great too. That's great teamwork. Uh, she's a great worker. I can't say enough good things about her, and Kaylani Jordan, yo, like she's she's a good choice. Obviously, WWE saw something that I didn't. Um, I obviously felt like Sol Ruka and others like Jada Parker. Uh, even Mi Chen like deserved it a little bit more than her, but at the end of the day, 
I ain't got no complaints, man. I'm going to keep it real. I don't got no complaints. I actually like Kalani Jordan. I love her game. I love the way she wrestles. She, yo, the, the Poison Rana, she got that shit down pat, and it's lethal as fuck. Um, and, and it's also a move that you don't see all, uh, typically all the time or done right all the time. So it's really dope that she has it in her um, bag and she's able to use it as often as she uses it on bigger scales than usual. Like, for example, like she's doing this shit off the top rope, gang. She's doing this shit off the top rope. Like, what the fuck? A Poison Rana off the top rope is kind of crazy. So, um, yeah, shout out her, yo. She's killing it as, uh, as the new North American champion uh, for the women. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very hyped on NXT Heat Wave, this fucking pay-per-view. Yo, if I could give it a 10 out of 10, I'd give it a 10. But in wrestling, they do five-star matches and shit like that. This was a five-star pay-per-view. All right? Um, the only match that I would call a 3.5 is that tag team match. But all the other matches was following up. So Ruka's match, five-star match. Um, Lola Vice and Roxanne Perez, four-star match. Um, Trick Williams' fatal four-way match. That was a five-star match. Ova versus Wesley. That was a four-star match. Easy. Easy. So, yeah, man. they th This was a great fucking pay-per-view. Sean. <laughs> you're shitting on Triple H right now, brother. You're just shitting on him. Like, that's the best thing I could say. That's the best thing I could say. All right, y'all. And just like that, we just rolled up a joint. We finna get this shit cracking. Let me find something to pack this shit. So that way this shit don't be falling out. And this is not a joint, by the way. This is split for my bad. Y'all saw me put that little tobacco in there at the beginning. Yes, sir. Just like that. I always twist the ends. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Lately, I've been doing that shit. I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I just see it like that. Sometimes I let it burn like that because, you know what I'm saying? It'd be cool. Or sometimes I'll just cut that shit off. In this instant, it's kind of chunky and just like, oh, D, so I'm gonna cut that shit off. Alrighty. See? Blah, I'll give it that fresh fade. Go ahead and pack this side. It's a wrap. Lay that little hold in right there. Blow. 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 Hold on, baby. Don't get loose. Don't get loose. Don't get loose. Don't get loose on me. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's talk about money in the bank. This pay-per-view, hilarious. <laughs> Well, not hilarious, haha, -ha, but there was definitely a lot of funny moments where you're just like, oh my god, okay, this was kind of a shit show. This was a bit of a shit show, I'm not gonna lie. Let's start off with the men's Money in the Bank match, okay? Drew McIntyre wins, long story short. Shout out to Andrade, okay? He's the MVP of that fucking match. They came out, he came out. And ain't nobody was showing him no love, like wasn't really cheering for him, like you know what I'm saying? He came out with low crowd sound, all that bullshit. So I just want to say shout out to Andrade because he ended up being the MVP of that match. He had a lot of great spots and he put his body through hell for our entertainment. So shout out to him, man. Um, that was some bullshit though. I think he should have got some more respect than that in Canada, but I don't know. We got to check his history. Andrade be doing a lot of ho-ass shit, and maybe he did some ho-ass shit in Canada once upon a time that we can't remember right now, but you gotta watch out for him. Anyway, back to the ladder match. Drew McIntyre wins, right? I'm gonna be real with y'all. That match wasn't that crazy. It, it, was, it was entertaining if you're a wrestling fan, but as far as, like, Ooh, and oh shit, like, you know, it was, it's like, ah, okay, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? I get that match about a four. That was my main reaction. I wasn't really too hyped on the uh, who won. Me personally, I thought Jay Uso should have won. That's not even like me for real, because I'd be saying Jay need a different moveset. But hey, maybe if he had a different moveset and got better at his movesets, then, you know, he probably, they probably would have put him in position to win that shit. 
But I think Drew McIntyre winning this match is a fucking waste. There's five other competitors that could have put that championship opportunity to better use than Drew McIntyre, who ended up going out there, cashing in, <laughs> and then fucking losing his opportunity. There's so many things that he did wrong. The first thing is, you didn't let the fucking match finish, okay? And nor did you wait for Cody Rhodes' match to finish. So, honestly... You probably could have been WWE champion by the end of the night because Cody Rhodes ended up losing the solo, which we're going to talk about later on, which is a little crazy to me. Um, but the biggest thing, you got to let the match in, bro. You got to let the match in. You got to let Seth Rollins beat Damian Priest the fuck up so that way you go out there and pick up the pieces. Why are you going to go out there and join mid-match when neither one of them are knocked out or even look like they're at a brink to where they're finna lose that shit? No, instead you went out there and injected yourself in that match, okay? And then number two, you tried to embarrass CM Punk once again on a national television stage and thought that he was just finna lay down somewhere and just be cool with that shit. Come on now. You think Phil was gonna let that shit slide, gang? Hell no. That nigga been waiting ever since that day you brought him out there leaking and all that shit. He couldn't wait to go out there and do that to you and cost you your opportunity, Drew. And then you had the nerve to go and put hands on Adam Pierce. Like, what the fuck Adam Pierce do to you? The nigga keep putting you in position to win and you keep fucking up because up here bro i don't know it's not clicking up here bro it's not clicking but i also don't like how they find cm punk for even being a part of that match because it's like yo it's a it turned into a triple threat match it, it was no disqualification that don't make no sense what did cm punk do wrong and you just seen what the nigga did to him a couple weeks ago he brought him out bloody all type of crazy ass shit Try to embarrass him, you know what I mean? So, it's like, why why y'all putting Phil through that shit? That didn't make no sense. But, Drew McIntyre is an idiot. I love Drew. I really hope I get to interview him and talk to him. But, like, right now, like, yo, that was very idiotic. Like, he's not thinking. He's just too horny to get out there and just put paws on a nigga and hold that championship belt again. But he's not, he's not thinking shit through. He's not thinking clearly. He's just out there just reacting instead of breaking shit down and, and, and going about it a certain way, like, you know, he's just, he's just too much, man. It's too much. So, yo, hopefully, like, this, uh, this time off allows Drew McIntyre to get his brain back together and in order so that way he can come out and win championships again. But, yo, this was, this was fucking embarrassing again. And a fucking waste. A waste. LA Knight could have won that shit. Andrade could have won that shit. Jay Uso could have won that shit. Carmelo Hayes. Yo. You, you took that opportunity from other people. And then didn't cash in your opportunity. Like Now you're a part of the list of niggas that couldn't get it done. And I got that list for y'all. Mr. Kennedy in 2007. John Cena in 2012. Damien Sando uh, in 2013, Baron Corbin in 2017, Braun Strowman 2018, Otis 2020, Austin Theory 2022, Drew McIntyre 2024. That's a shitty ass list to be a part of. Niggas that couldn't get the job done when they won that briefcase. Why would you want to be a part of that list, bro? And you had the perfect setup to go out there and be great but again you're not thinking clearly bro don't blame nobody but yourself but up next let's talk about the women's ladder match this match was actually fire i enjoyed this match and uh the right person won this match tiffany stratton yo um yo she's on the best uprise i've seen in a cool ass minute like they're really not dropping the ball with her um it makes perfect sense and I can't wait to see her as the next WWE Women's Champion. It's well-deserved. It makes the most sense. Um, she was a rising star in NXT. Got the NXT Championship like that because of her moveset, uh, her in-ring skills and mental. 
uh, is it's all solid and official. So it made perfect sense to me when she won this match. I was very hyped to see her win this match. Um, at the same time, let's be honest. I would have been hyped if Chelsea Green won this match, yo. This would have been the resurrection <laughs> of her career for real. You know what I mean? Uh, she could have been on some Carmella shit. Um, I really don't understand why they haven't really given her that type of opportunity yet. But, uh, you know, if she just keep working and doing what she do, she'll get it eventually, you know? Um, I really love Chelsea Green as a person and her game in the ring. is It's, it's spectacular. She's a magnificent entertainer. I'm always entertained when I see her. She's hilarious. She looks great. And she looks fitting for the WWE Women's Championship. Let's be real. I'm really hyped on her as well. Um, Naomi, of course... You gotta, you, you definitely gotta root for the sisters to win. I wouldn't have minded if she won as well. Um, but yeah, like I said, the right person won. Um, shout out to Tiffany Stratton. She's been doing her thing. That's one of my favorite women's wrestlers today. And uh, I'm hyped, yo. I'm really hyped on her. Okay, the next match I want to talk about is Braun Breaker versus Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship. Okay. Yo, this match was definitely one of one. I enjoyed it from beginning to end. Uh, Braun Breaker. I've seen a lot of people on the internet talking about, oh, this match killed Braun Breaker's momentum and all this other bullshit. Hell the fuck no. You got to really think about it, yo. Sami Zayn just beat Gunther for this shit. You think he about to lose this shit to Braun Breaker? Come on now. And on top of that, this doesn't kill Braun Breaker's momentum because you put him up against anybody else he gonna beat the hell out of them paws. You know what I'm saying? It's literally gonna be belt to ass season. And he was giving Sami Zayn hell, but it's just like, yo, Sami Zayn been on some other shit, like where he's just been overcoming a lot of bullshit during the match, and he's able to just turn into this Iron Man. And next thing you know, he you on your wallet because he done kicked your fucking chin to the fucking 10th row. <laughs> so you got to, you know, tip your cap to Sami Zayn, yo. He, he been stepping it up in the fucking ring. He was built for this shit. It, so it made sense for the outcome to be Sami Zayn retaining his championship belt, yo. He worked for that shit. He really worked for that shit. And, yo, like I said, Braun Breaker, you put him up against anybody else, he's most likely going to win or he's going to beat the hell out of them. It's, that's just the way it is <laughs> when it comes to Braun Breaker, yo. Like, this nigga is a fucking machine. And I bet any nigga that has to go in there, whether this shit is fucking uh, scripted or not, yo, you, you're going to be fucking nervous or scared to go up in there. Come on. Like, it's Braun Breaker. This nigga runs ropes 23 miles per hour and then spears the fuck out, yo. You gotta say a prayer every time you get in the ring with that nigga, bro. Every time you get in the ring with that nigga, it's no joke. The last and final match of Money in the Bank I wanna talk about is the six man tag match between. Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, and Cody Rhodes versus The Bloodline. Uh, Tamatonga, uh, sorry if I'm, if I'm butchering these names, these are new names. <laughs> Tamatonga, uh, Solo Sokoa, and of course the new debuting Jacob Fatu. And shout out Jake, bro. Jake is so fucking impressive. This was a great WWE pickup. This is somebody that can go off and be a champion on his own that doesn't need the bloodline that could literally just go do his own thing and he's going to be fucking great. I can guarantee you he'll be a world champion within the next three years. And I say that simply because of what they're doing with uh, Cody Rhodes and the niggas on SmackDown. So he's going to have to get drafted to Raw. He's going to have to go through their trials and tribulations. He might get a mid-card belt and then he'll get that championship, and all that can happen within three years or less. So that's what I'm projecting Jacob Fatu at right now. Three years, world champ, for sure, because, yo, you can't drop the ball with him either, yo. This nigga's a fucking monster, and he can do everything. Everything? Everything, nigga. Like, <laughs> he don't miss. He don't miss. He's fucking athletic as fuck for his build. He's like a Samoan Kevin Owens without the gut. 
And how long have I been on this fucking show telling y'all niggas if this nigga Kevin Owens loses that gut, he gonna be an issue. Is he not? Is he not gonna be an issue? Come on now. I'm just trying to put this shit together, y'all. Y'all gotta, you know, it, you can't just go for my, it can't just be my word. Y'all gotta help me put this information out there. So talk to your boy KO, tell him to lose the gut. And I promise you, he he gonna extend his career. He gonna be cool. He gonna be cool as shit. This is the part of the show I didn't really want to talk about. Let's be real. Nobody wants to sit here and talk about the fucking retirement of John Cena. Gotta have the spinner belt on for this. So, unfortunately, my guy John Cena plans on hanging it up. I done got on this show on countless occasions and told you guys how much of an impact he's made on my life and how grateful I am to have witnessed him wrestle and not just know him as what he do in Hollywood. You know what I mean? There's a lot of kids right now that's growing up just knowing that nigga to be the peacemaker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's kind of foul work because this man is the greatest WWE champion of all fucking time, the 16-time champion the GOAT, the Triple Crown Champion. This nigga's won every belt in WWE. What can you say? He's done everything. He's won Money in the Bank. He's run Royal Rumbles twice. Elimination Chambers. Um, you know, uh, Last Man Standing matches. I Quit matches. Some of the most brutal matches you've ever fucking seen. This man had his dad snatched out the crowd by Randy Orton and kicked in the fucking head. He's been through a lot of crazy shit. This nigga's the only wrestler in wrestling history to go platinum as a rapper. Let me let me give you guys a little bit of history, all right? John Cena's debut album sold at 143,000 copies in just the first week, okay? And then the album went on to go platinum right after that, all right? And let me also add, that's more copies than Kendrick Lamar, Playboy Cardi, Gunna, and Travis Scott, all right? This is the GOAT. Okay, so when niggas is talking about Roman Reigns and all this other shit, no, 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 no. I get what Roman did, that's dope and all that, but John Cena did that shit 16 times, and on top of that, the nigga is a culture icon, okay? Like, you know, like how J Dave Chappelle had that draft where, like, a, a racist draft, basically? Yeah, John Cena got drafted to the black people back in 2006, and he been with us ever since. So, like, this nigga is, he's us. Like, this nigga's an entire cultural icon, uh, a fashion icon, all type of that. Like, everything, you know what I'm saying? So, not a lot of niggas can compare to what this man has done in the wrestling industry in, you know, in the past 25 years. Uh, this is one of my favorite wrestlers. Uh, this is my favorite wrestler of all time. Number one on my list. I don't care what fruit pop shit he be doing in Hollywood or what they be making him do, all that lame ass shit. I, at the end of the day, this is my favorite wrestler. I'm gonna look past that shit and just love this part of it. <laughs> love this part of the game because this is the part that means the most to me. This is why I get up and, and do this and, and spend all my money on this, on this shit, <laughs> okay? Just for that, you know what I mean? So. Shout out to him. And you got to give a shout out to Stephanie McMahon because she ended up saving John Cena from being released in 2003. If she didn't hear him rapping on that bus, we would have never got John Cena, yo. So <laughs> shout out to Stephanie for knowing talent and giving this man from West Newberry, Massachusetts, a fucking chance. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that, it's, it's crazy how all that shit works out. And it's really dope too because when John Cena ends up really retiring they're gonna do an entire tour for him so it's gonna go from January 2025 all the way to December 2025 um, so he'll we'll be seeing a lot of John Cena when that shit hits Netflix and it's gonna be lit because it's gonna be the first time that WWE is on Netflix so they they gonna be cursing shit gonna be crazy yo and it looked like they might be setting him up to win number 17 and even if it's the World Heavyweight Championship, that's okay. That is okay. Like, it's still beating Ric Flair, and that's the championship that Ric Flair held the most. 
Anyway, so it would be fitting. I just want to see him break the record. I feel like he deserves that shit. It, that would mean the most to me. I don't know why, but like just to be able to witness that. It's a fan thing. Like you gotta, you if you know, you know. Triple H says that John Cena can join the Hall of Fame whenever he wants, and I think that is such a a great honor to to give John Cena. And I, I feel like he really deserves that shit. He earned that shit. This man holds the record for most Make a Wishes of all time. Like this is who you want to see before you die. <laughs> Like, that's what I'm basically trying to say, like, yeah, respectfully, and no disrespect by any of that, like, you know, like, it's just being real, like, if I was gonna kick the bucket, the last person I'd want to see, I'm not even gonna lie, I'm, I'm gonna choose John Cena, that or Lotto, or Megan Thee Stallion, no, I'm gonna go with Lotto, I gotta see Big Mama, I fuck with Big Mama more than everybody, I ain't gonna lie, no disrespect to none of them, because I, I love Koi, I love Gorilla, I love fucking Megan, all the, all the thick ones, the ooh-wees, but it's something about a lot of it, I, I trust her, I fuck with her, but we getting aside, we getting aside from this shit, <sighs> my dog John Cena's retiring, man, that's some fucking bullshit, yo, a part of me is mad at John Cena because it's like, bro, you wasted some of your prime going to fucking Hollywood in 2016. Like, if he would have stuck around just a little bit longer and won that one and um, and won that one last championship, bro, everything would be cool. It would be a, a way more peaceful send off. People wouldn't be as heartbroken as they are to see you go. But you done left an image of yourself in the ring as this old nigga and shit. So I'm really hoping that. John Cena is training and getting his body in full wrestling shape and gearing up because he's talking about he's going to be here for at least 40 shows. So, man, your your body going to have to be in one hell of a shape. So, I'm I'm really hoping everything goes right. I'm hoping that he comes back and he has a new focus and he really does want to win that championship one more time uh because that would mean everything, yo. That would mean everything. That would be a dope way to go out and that's the way he deserves to go out. Let me also give you guys a fact. In January, 80% of the globe will have access to WWE via Netflix. WWE is now hot. Looks like it's going to get hotter next year with John Cena's retirement and The Rock's first single match in years. And I got this from Wrestling News on Twitter. So y'all go check their page out. They got a lot of great wrestling shit and it's all valid information. Okay, so uh, I trust them the most. Shout out them. Those are my guys. I just wanted to be correct on this. Who would you guys want to see John Cena compete against in this retirement tour leading all the way up to the last match? You guys let me know in the comments. Um, yo, he's got a, a murderous row of people that want hands with him for sure. You know, he, John Cena also held a lot of niggas down. I'm sure other niggas from other companies want phase with John Cena too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Brian Danielson, uh, shit, Edge. Th these niggas is not in other companies. They still, I'm sure they want to get down with you at least one more time. Pause, like, you know? So, yo, I, I, I can't wait to see who's going to be uh, on the list of people that John Cena ends up going against. Hopefully, it's a good balance of new talent and uh, also some throwback opponents. But at the same time, I don't want John Cena to lose not one of these matches, bro. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Even if these niggas go out there and beat John Cena an inch of his life, John Cena still better win that match, my nigga. Do you hear me? John Cena better win that motherfucking match, bro. That's how serious it is, bro. Y'all can call me biased, whatever you want. Call wrestling, scrap. I don't give a fuck, nigga. John Cena better win every fucking match until he retired, bro. That's how that shit go. I don't give a fuck, okay? Now, there's some people that was on Twitter talking about they won't smoke with John Cena. I'm going to go ahead and give y'all a few of them, all right? So we got um, Omos. <laughs> Imagine that. Omos versus John Cena. Holy shit. Uh, Matt Cordona, he said on Twitter, I want Cena. In my head, I'm like, no, you don't. Well, with this version of Cena, I'm not going to lie. I would be out there trying to fight. I'm like, yo, he's going to definitely take it easy on you. 
He gonna do the five moves of doom on you. He, this ain't 2017, 2016 John Cena. No, this is a little older. So he's not gonna do no crazy shit to you. This might be the safest point in John Cena's career that y'all as competitors should, can face him. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, shit, Bronson Reed, that would be one hell of a fight. He said, big match John can get this work. Balls. But yeah, Bronson Reed, it, that would be one hell of a fade. You don't want no smoke with him. Grayson Waller, he, he posted a picture. He said, before you leave. Yeah, nah, 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 buddy. Nah, <laughs> I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. Yeah, I, I fuck with Grayson Waller and all that, but nah, we're not going to waste time with him. We, we're we going to line John Cena up with, with somebody else. But yeah, in my opinion... John Cena got to go against Randy Orton for his last match ever. It only makes sense. Come on now. I don't want to see him go against anybody else. If it ain't Randy Orton, it's trash. Let's keep it real. If it's not Randy Orton, it's trash. Okay? It's, it's poor booking. All right? And there need to be one hell of a, a fade leading up to it. There got to be drama leading up to it. Somebody in John Cena's family got to get kicked again. Um, all of that, bro. All of that. I'm um, I'm super serious. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want John Cena's family to get injured or nothing, nothing crazy. But I need it to be that type of tension when it comes to this build up for that match at WrestleMania, where it's John Cena versus Randy Orton. Yo, come on now. Who would y'all pick to take that spot other than Randy Orton? Come on now. I would not get that shit to Cody Rhodes. I feel like he'll just make that shit too corny. You know what I mean? What if Batista come out of retirement and end up going against John Cena one more time? That would be dope. I I really hate that John Cena said he'll never wrestle again. Like, come on, bro. Even Bret Hart wrestled one more fucking time and became the United States champion. So it's like, come on, my nigga. Really? No more ever again? I wouldn't mind if John Cena was on some Paul Heyman type of shit, too. That would be dope to see that nigga uh, managing young talent or hanging out with Carmelo Hayes, giving him some game. Like, yo, and then John Cena can be a heel in that fashion. That would be dope. That would be dope. Hey, WWE, I'm giving y'all ideas. Oh, and in case y'all didn't see my wristband, y'all already know what the fuck going on. You can't see me, fuck nigga. Let me get something to drink. Now, y'all might be thinking to yourselves, what is this nigga doing with this bong and this roach? Well, I'm finna tell you. Y'all niggas better not be calling me thirsty. Fuck y'all. <coughs> so look, I got a nice size bowl piece. I always put my roaches in there. And then, just smoke them out the bowl. Like a regular joint on some cool shit. While I talk about wrestling, let's get it, let's go. Let's look at the next topic we got for tonight. Um, I had spoken about AEW earlier, but I want to jump back into it and tell you guys what they got coming up this week. Definitely make sure you guys tune in to Dynamite. We got Chris Jericho versus Samoa Joe in a stadium stampede street fight. The last stadium stampede I seen was insane. It wasn't called a street fight, so I feel like this is going to be a little bit something extra. It was just called a stadium stampede match, so they added street fight. I don't know if that's just something extra that they're doing or if it's just going to be the same shit. I don't know. I'm kind of faded right now, y'all, so bear with me. Anyway, then we also going to hear from our champ, the AEW world champion, Swerve Strickland. we also going to get to see Brian Danielson go against Hangman Adam Page. Uh... That shit about to be dope. The next match on Dynamite will be Brian Damson versus Hangman Adam Page in the Owen Hart Tournament Final. I can't wait to see this match. I feel like Brian Damson, he got a different look in his eye. He really not playing around. And he talking about this is his last round. So I really got faith that he's going to win this tournament. He not playing with these niggas. And he just had a great ass match with Pac. Uh, ended up packing him out and winning that match. So, shout out to uh, BD. Hopefully, 
You know, he gets that world championship. He's been in AEW for years, and he's supposed to be the guy there, but ain't never won a belt. Shit is crazy. It's beyond me. It is beyond me. And also, we'll be hearing from Will Ospreay. I can't wait to see what he got to say. He just quit the Don Callis group, so we're going to see what's next for him. jump back into Money in the Bank because I didn't really get to talk too much about that six-man tag team match between uh, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, and Cody Rhodes versus the Bloodline. The fact that Solo was able to win that match from Cody Rhodes is, is insane, but when you think back to it, it makes sense because, yo, Solo Sokoa's probably lost to Cody Rhodes more times than anybody on the fucking roster. So it's like, yo, all right, refreshing to finally see him win and it gives him a one-on-one -on -one opportunity to go against Cody Rhodes because that kind of makes him the number one contender that's usually how that shit works or it gets you a title match sooner than later so I can't wait to see what develops from that yo but there was like a lot of botches and money in the bank too like that's what made it so damn lame yo I'm not gonna lie and uh the biggest one happened in this match because fucking Tungaloa he gets in the ring and he's supposed to basically give uh, Kevin Owens a, a low blow pause like when you hit nigga in the dick and he ends up hitting this nigga in his gooch completely missing and then has to go in there and redo it and ends up hitting Tungaloa in the fucking forehead like this shit is crazy man I got it on my phone just just look at this real quick y'all like <laughs> Come on, where y'all get this nigga? Where did y'all get this nigga? No, do you guys know that he has an entire highlight tape of him doing this lame ass shit to niggas? Look, look at this shit. He's been known. He's been known. He's a repeat offender. What is this? WWE was just really thirsty for this bloodline uh, shit. And I understand because it's going to make money. It's a good investment and blah, blah, blah. But nah, not him. He's low-key fired. Look, this was his debut. That was his debut, bro. This nigga's fired. This nigga's fired, bro. He's fired. He's fired. And also Damian Priest. I didn't really get to speak too much on that match, but in, in terms of Damian Priest, he should have lost that match. Let's be real. Uh, after Drew McIntyre got taken out by CM Punk, uh, Seth Rollins was able to hit that nigga with a Falcon Arrow, and Seth Rollins should have won that shit. Like, he, sh he flat out should have won. Damian Priest didn't kick out of the Falcon Arrow slam. Like, it was like, <laughs> the nigga literally just forgot to kick out. I, or either that or he was really out um, and Triple H let me read to you guys what Triple H had to say about that shit a bunch of people will criticize that Damian Priest's kick out botch uh, but I would switch his cell and remind him all the good job he's done and he, the run he is having I look at him as a top tier guy that was some lightweight glaze, okay? No. You flat out should have just straight up told him, bruh, <laughs> you lost that fucking match. And if I was in that match with you and you didn't kick out, but the ref stopped the count, I would be livid. I would be pissed the fuck off and we gonna run that shit back. If I'm Seth Rollins, I gotta get my fucking rematch. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? I beat that nigga. I beat him. And the nigga, the match should have been over. The ref robbed me with his weird ass full cut. It was full hot. Annoying ass full hot. Nigga, it's 2024. You got a full hot. That's your problem. That's why you couldn't fucking count to three, nigga. Nigga, ain't nobody kick. He thought he was going to kick out. That's what's supposed to happen. But no, he didn't, bro. Do your fucking job. Do your job. It's that simple, bro. Come on. 
Like, I don't give a fuck what you're getting paid or what they tell you to do. At the end of the day, you got to keep the integrity of wrestling. And if the nigga is not kicking out, his shoulders is flat on the mat and you can count to 10, bitch, you better count to 10. Are you crazy? What are you doing? What are you doing? If I'm Triple H, I'm going to find the referee and I'm going to give Seth Rollins a number one contender rematch at the next fucking pay-per-view or whatever else is coming up uh, or the next week on Monday Night Raw. It, it needs to be done. Something else that we can be looking forward to in AEW, we got DMD, the return of Britt Baker. Um, I'm super hyped on this because she's been out with uh, this this crazy ass arm injury. I didn't even know it was this crazy, but um, apparently she had like a miniature type of stroke to where half of the right side of her body shut down, and she ended up just having to get her health back together and shit. She told Tony Khan she'll need some time. He granted that to her. So we haven't seen her in some, quite some time. But, but she's back in AEW, and she comes out picking a fight with the wrong one. Let's be real. Um, I love Britt Baker. Love her to death. But Mercedes Monet is not who you want to see fresh off an injury. <laughs> I don't know what type of you know sense that makes. Um... I mean, it is at AEW All In, so you got some time to train and, you know, get yourself back in ring shape. But, yo, you're going to need a lot more time if you think you're going to be taking anything away from Mercedes Monet. Especially when she keeps getting more and more momentum each week. Like, oh, come on. Like, I love you, Britt, but I, I don't see that to be happening for you in your future. I'm just being real. Um... Yo, Mercedes Monet, she's doing one hell of a job right now. She is in her fucking bag. And she's out there proving why right now, yeah, she is the GOAT. I gotta say she is. She's won the Women's Championship in WWE at least seven different times. Um, and then she went to Japan and held their championships. And now she's in AEW holding two championships. Charlotte, Bailey, and Becky have not done that. They have not done that. So, yo, she's on another level, and you can call her the GOAT right now. <laughs> oh, shit, y'all. And, yo, speaking of the women, guess what, y'all? They are finally making United States Championships and Intercontinental Championships for the women. <sighs> Finally, after how many years of begging and pleading, y'all, I made this show in 2022. We've been talking about this shit for two years straight, make more championships for the women, and they are finally doing it. They started off with the North American Championship and gave that to Kaylana Jordan. Shout out to her. She's the first ever, and on top of that, she's black, so that makes her the first ever black WWE NXT North American Champion. Shout out to her. So I can't wait to see who they're going to give these Intercontinental and United States Championship women's belts to in WWE. Um, I feel like Natalia should definitely have one. Uh, you guys got to give her one, bro. She's the biggest loser in WWE, and I say that with respect. And I'm not saying like she's a loser like in real life or like her personality. I'm saying... She has the highest loss rate in WWE. She loses the most out of every woman on the roster. So, you know, y'all got to repay her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, y'all just repaid The Miz. He's the biggest loser in WWE. And not a personality or nothing like that. Like, outside of this shit, he's just... He's lost the most as a male in WWE. Yo, it's fucking crazy. But y'all repaid him by giving him tag team championships. Y'all got to do the same thing for Natalia, yo. And I feel like Meechin should definitely hold one of them bitches, too. Definitely. Um, who else? Of course, you guys going to throw Becky in there. Uh, Liv Morgan when she loses this shit. Uh, fucking Io, uh, Io Sky. Bianca Belair, definitely. Bianca Belair got to be the next United States champion. For sure. She's got to be the first ever United States champion. I would love to see that shit. 
Um, but yeah, y'all, after two years of begging and pleading with these motherfuckers, they finally heard us out, and they are making more championships for the women. You guys got to understand, more championships for the women makes more storylines. They got so much fucking talent in the back that they can't utilize or have on a weekly basis because they they don't mix with what they got going on right now. So it's just like, yo, they in the back collecting dust. So when you add more belts and more shit to compete for, now you're giving these women more opportunities and you're giving them TV time and you're helping pay them and... You know, shit is just, it's, it's flowing. That's how it's supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, why do the men have these fucking belts and you guys can have all these storylines for them? But when it comes to the women, and we're fucking subjected to just two women's world championship belts. That shit is whack as fuck. It don't make no sense. I've been tired of seeing that shit. And that's something that I've always wondered since... I've started watching this shit. Like, why haven't they done this shit sooner? It, it would make it only more interesting. You would think that they've done it by now, but hey, I'm just happy they're doing it now. You know what I mean? So, can't even complain. Last but not least, I've been hearing some rumors that AEW and WWE are planning on teaming up. But I've also been hearing that Shane O'Mac is going to be going to AEW because they're trying to sign him. And then I just seen on Ringside News that they talking about signing Vince McMahon. I'm like, what? And if you guys don't follow Ringside News, definitely go follow them on Twitter. They got good legible sources and uh, all their news is very accurate and whatnot. And I, I trust them as a legible news source. Um, so that's why I'm speaking from them. Uh, but shout out to them. Yeah, so they talking about Tony Khan urged to sign Vince McMahon despite federal investigation. I think that's pretty crazy. I don't know if that's true. These are all rumors as of right now until I hear some more information about it. But I have heard that Shane O'Mac was talking to Mercedes Monet for a minute uh, recently. Uh, I don't I don't know what's up with that. So y'all keep an eye out for that. If y'all got any information on that, definitely tap in with me. Let me know. I want to be up to date. I want to get hip to this. Um, if Vince McMahon joins AEW, holy shit, what the fuck is gonna happen? What what they got going on over there? Like what's what what's the deal? And that also means. Vince might have some evidence that he good, you know, of all the shit that these niggas been accusing him of and shit like that. He might have evidence that she lying and everything. They all lies and he just, you know, he, who knows? We don't really know. As of right now, it's looking GG's. It's looking like he's cooked. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. It's looking like he's cooked. But, yo, if Tony Khan is really still trying to do business with him, then shit... They must know something. They must know something that we don't, for sure. Uh, or if Shane O'Mac is trying to go over there, or maybe they're trying to bind the bridge between the two. I feel like, personally, too, or, well, I've also heard that WWE might buy AEW and make it part of their programming. So I was just on this show a couple weeks ago telling y'all, WWE is in a position where they can help these other companies flourish and 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 come up like you're using their wrestlers already you know what i mean so you like how they develop their stars and whatnot because you're utilizing them like look at jacob fatu i mean shit look at daniel bryan look at you know cm punk they, these niggas come from ring of honor and shit like that and so you like how they get down from all these other places i mean like look at shinsuke y'all fuck with that type of shit so you know start doing business with them and and help them come up you know what's wrong with that like y'all are in a position right now where you know nobody can compete with y'all you guys are the only billion dollar wrestling company <laughs> multi-billion dollar wrestling company and you guys are combined with the ufc and netflix and shit y'all is good like can't nobody fuck with y'all and it would be at least a, another century before AEW or any one of these other companies could even sniff a billion off of y'all like that like so y'all got five plus of them bitches <laughs> so it'll be a minute before anybody catches up so yeah y'all that's why i feel like wwe should definitely help like tna aw 
uh, New Japan, all those brands as much as they can. Like uh, Major League uh, Wrestling, all of that shit. Like, why not? Y'all, y'all's up. Come on now. But yeah, y'all, I really appreciate everybody tapping in. Hope you guys like the new setup. We're going to be doing this shit from time to time. When I move up out of here, we definitely going to be doing the webcam vision. I kind of like this a little bit more because I'm all up in the screen. I can really see y'all. You know what I'm saying? This is a one-on-one. Y'all my niggas. And you feel what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, you know, this is, I fuck with this. So, thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Um, oh, and tap in with my shop down there. Go get y'all some Players Club gear so y'all can stay fly. You know what I'm saying? I got something for everybody. Uh, the shit is unisex type shit, so women can wear it too. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all like to cut shit up. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do to make that shit look for you. You feel me? Because it's definitely for you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, y'all fuck with y'all. Thank y'all so much for tapping in. Um, again, share this shit with the world, y'all. Y'all stay safe. Peace.